So uh, marine microbiomes and how they interact with the larger organisms that we're interested. Uh, we're actually lucky. My lab is funded at the moment by uh, three NSF grants to look at uh, education and how we can integrate bioinformatics into education, um, cell and molecular uh, group, and also an RCN where we want to have identify some core competencies of what you how you would integrate bioinformatics into undergraduate education. We're interested in oh. Don't move the computer is the answer to that question. There we go. It was there. Come back. Don't you hate that? Okay, so the three major areas we focus on are coral reefs, kelp forests, and sharks. So we're interested in how the microbes function within each of these systems and how a change in the microbial community because of um, something perhaps in the earth that we do in the environment changes the microbial community and then how that actually affects the health of each of these organisms. And I'm only going to focus on the health or um, the microbial interactions with the sharks today. So most of you guys think about sharks like this, mean and nasty, but actually they have lots of useful functions in the environment. They're top predators, which is the bit we look at, and that helps exert pressure downwards on the marine environment and make sure we can increase our diversity of other organisms that live there. They have really interesting osmoregulation abilities. They have an unusual uh, immune system. We cause extensive fishing to them. And the th what we do to the sharks is probably affecting all of these things. The other things that sharks have is a unique skin surface. So the question is, how many of you have actually patted a shark lately? Oh, one, yay. So important, always pet the shark in the right direction because the other direction is really sharp. So their skin is covered with teeth. And this is what their teeth look like. These photographs were taken by Ingrid, who's our new um, electron microscope person. So we have a leopard shark skin up here, and you can see its teeth um, showing up here. And this is a soup fin shark, poorly named. Um, and you can see how its teeth are actually different. But the thing you really notice about it um, is the fact that they have very little biofilm on them. And that was what we were interested in. They have this, this skin because it makes them swim faster. That's what everyone believes. But you can see that the biofilm is actually on the trailing edge of the, the, um, the, the, um, the denticle, the dermal denticle. So it might be that this skin is actually changing the types of microbes that are there. <coughs> so if we want to find that out, we went and actually, sorry, Ingrid provided us some slightly more detailed photographs. And you can see that there's interesting micro patterns. And also here's some of the bacterial film that we see. So this surface is mostly clean. And here's just a tiny few bacteria there. So this is kind of unusual. Most surfaces have lots of bacteria. This one does not. So I sent my student, Mike, out to have a look for some sharks and see if we could find some and obtain their microbial community. So the first one we started on was this thresher shark. This is a juvenile thresher shark about this big. And we catch these in a great quantity off um, LA and Huntington Beach. So we're wondering if that shark skin actually changes the types of microbes that live there, whether they have a special niche um, and whether we might be able to use, they actually do use the shark skin for um, making surfaces a bit more microbe proof. So the first thing we did was go and collect the sharks, uh, the microbes off the shark skin. And then we go through a whole process of DNA sequencing, which returns us 
tons and tons and tons of data, and I'm not going to describe how we analyze that. But here's what we found. So here's the different microbes that occur in great quantities in these microbiomes. And this is what the shark looks like for these microbes. And this is what the water looks like. So absolutely, that biophysical pro skin is changing the microbes that occur there. The next thing we looked at was what sort of um, functions do those microbes have? So we can take the genes of the microbes and see what sort of um, types of things the microbes are doing. So once again, our sharks here in gray have totally different physical or totally different functional attributes compared to with a water column, not surprising. The thing that is kind of surprising is that many of them suggest that these microbes are actually living in a really stressful environment. So sharks, you know, have teeth in their mouth and teeth on their skin, so no wonder the microbes are scared. But um, in this case, it might be something else. So it may be the location where sharks actually excrete a lot of the heavy metals that they're coming into contact with. They may be excreting salt there. Um, and they may be secreting um, uh, sort of organic pollutants that we put in the water. Um, that's a nice spot to get rid of them. But of course, the microbes that are, are sitting there are um, then affected by it. So to have a look at that process a little bit better, we thought we'd look across three shark species, which have different attributes. So if you sit close to the benthos and you're slow moving, your ability to get sat on by a, shark, uh, by a microbe is probably way more uh, likely. Whereas if you're a fast moving one, um, you're less likely and you have better uh, thermodynamics so that the microbes have a harder time getting on these two surfaces. These guys eat different things. These eat small uh, fish and some crustaceans. These eat uh, tiny planktonic things. So we caught up with them in Cancun where they were feeding on caviar, so expensive tastes. These guys eat larger things. They're further up the, um, uh, the uh, food web. So we think that A, how your shark skin is and what your movement is might change your microbes. What you eat might change your microbes. And by looking across these organisms, we might be able to see, is it by accumulation of different uh, heavy metals, et cetera, which is causing that sort of stressful environment for the microbes? Or is it, in fact, where you live? So it was the ones from Huntington Beach that were kind of showing these um, genes that are trying to get rid of all these toxic components. So if we're looking at some in other, direction, other areas, that might also help us explain some of those variations. So not surprising when you go out and collect these sharks, they're microbiomes, so I've just taken their taxonomic component here and compared them, their taxa across uh, things, cro sorry, I've compared their taxa across these organisms, and you can see that each group has its own particular taxa. We haven't unwound the function of these yet. Just recently, we were extremely lucky to actually obtain a donation to help us uh, look at the sharks, and we're now looking at sharks, uh, these whale sharks across multiple locations across the world, which is really nice. And we've also obtained two scholarships, but you have to be fairly brave to, to use them, um, to apply for them. And so I thought I could do this while you're asking me questions, and you can watch the nice whale shark. <laughs> You guys can ask me questions, that's it. <laughs> questions? Thank you for that talk. I was wondering what? I, it. <laughs> Thank you for that talk. Um, I was wondering what the, uh, the skin is actually made out of, uh, the, the composition, and th that leads to the next question is, if the pH is getting more acidic due to the oh. dis dissolving CO2 in it, uh, like it affects corals and crustaceans and stuff, will it affect shark skin? Um, so shark skin is teeth, so it's the same structure as a tooth, and a tooth I think is made out of keratin, so um, will the tooth, no, it's made, yeah, uh, will it dissolve? 
I don't think so, unfortunately. I think they're going to keep biting us, you know. The sharks usually have those little pilot fish, those little cleaner fish that swim with them. Do they affect what's growing on the skin? Because aren't they constantly like cleaning the skin of the sharks? Um, sharks, yes, all sharks have. So the question is, do they have those pilot fish that you can see here? Um, a big object in the water column always has fish associated with it. The, sh the, mic the those sort of fish would be cleaning some of the bigger stuff that lands on them, not the microbes necessarily, because they don't have um, the small enough uh, filtering to be able to get the microbes. The whale sharks even have those fish that live in, the, they actually sit in their mouth also and float in and out as the shark has a mouthful of uh, water, which is kind of fun. Yeah. Liz, do you think the microbes play an important role in the shark skin, or are they just there? I thought microbes are always important, Stanley. Wasn't that the answer? I didn't say important. I said important role for the shark skin. I think. Do they have an important role for the shark skin? Would they be? Ha so, if you're depositing heavy metals in your skin, would they be a way to actually get rid of the heavy metals off the skin? Maybe. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Maybe they cause cavities. No, they don't cause cavities. <laughs> what, what, what's the evolutionary or aerodynamic reason why the skin is made of teeth? Uh, it's so you can swim well. We believe it's so you can swim well. So what's the uh, reason to to have? Uh, yeah, teeth. It's 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 an efficient swimming. It's, yeah. It's, it's for okay. So that's the aerodynamic. No. Why don't other fish or other animals have teeth? Well, because they evolved. Uh, so why don't other fish have teeth on their skin? <laughs> I think, did they evolve at a different, they evolved at a slightly different time. So the fish have a, a scale, but they have mucus across the top of their scales. So sharks are more, um, are constantly, more constantly moving. They don't, don't all constantly move, but they're more constantly moving. So that definitely that um, the teeth brings the um, boundary layer down, right? So there's less fluid friction. So I'm trying to answer a question to a physics guy. <laughs> so the shark can't swim backwards then, because <laughs> it'll go against the direction. No, a shark cannot swim backwards, actually. Yeah, yeah. They have to swim forwards, you're right. I've never seen a shark swim backwards. Yeah. <laughs> and these sharks are immensely big, and they are not upset at all about us taking their samples. And we have a blind syringe taking the samples so that they're not getting, we're not injuring them at all. Yeah. But you didn't tell us anything about the uh, flora on great white sharks. Uh, that's next week. I, these are my, my shark bait students, so I'm going to send them there next week. So if you took some of the shark skin and attached it to a coral reef, for example, would you then see a change of the colonization of the bacteria on the skin due to the different environment and not moving around on the ocean? So is, it, so the, skin, is the skin of the shark um, the thing that's causing it or the shark that's causing the microbes on there? Yeah. That's, so there's been a little bit of there's been a bit of a study where they've made a shark skin so they haven't taken the shark skin they've actually produced one with the same sort of patterning and it reduces the number of microbes that land on it and so that is translated into um, products for hospitals etc where you can put them on handle door handles and things like that having that micro patterning is meant to reduce the um, the number of microbes um, we, we would like to try that in a flow hood so that you actually took your skin and then um, put a different amount of flow across it and saw how much, m how many microbes settled depending on how fast the water was going past it, which would be a different way of asking that question. Yeah. yeah. Thanks very much, Liz. Cool. <laughs>